Welcome to this first series of screencasts on multiple integration and as with parcel differentiation really it's all about practicing um, building up examples starting with some simple examples and so um, that's what we'll do let's start with some first examples and this is what you're asked to do you're asked to compute the following two integrals a double integral is this one and this one well I should say repeated integrals now hopefully you'll see that they're the same and let me just uh, emphasize that by showing the nesting here so let's look at this integral here the inner integral because of the position that dy tells us this inner integral is over y and therefore the limits of, of y are from uh, 1 to 2 this outer integral therefore is the integral over x and its limits are from 0 to 3 let's just compare that with here oh and you can see the function that we're integrating is x squared y the same in both cases now here we have the the integrals are reversed here's this inner integral and you can see by the position of the dx it's this it's this dx that tells us that the inner, inner integral is an integral over x, the limit is 0 to 3, and uh, then we have the outer integral over y. And again, you see that these limits, therefore, on the x and the y integration are the same for the two, um, the two integrals, and those correspond to a rectangle. It wasn't explicitly stated here, but you should have in mind, it's very important to keep in mind what region you're actually integrating over. This is a rectangle, x is between 0 and 3, and y is between 1 and 2. So that's the region that we're integrating over. All right, so let's just get going. Uh, I'm going to do this one first. So the, the outer integral is going to be done last. You always do nesting. You always start from the inner integral and work your way out. So I'm just going to write it, uh, the outer integral. Now, I would bring down the dx, but I'm not quite sure how much room I need. So just mentally, don't forget to bring it down. But let's, um, let's go ahead and do this inner integral. Rather than repeat it, I'm just going to go ahead and integrate it. We're integrating over y. x is a constant as far as this integration is concerned. So it just goes along for the ride and we have uh, x squared. y gets integrated to y squared over 2. And we're evaluating that over the limits 1 to 2. And now I can bring down my, my dx because I know where it goes. And uh, let's see, I'm going to go down to the next line. So we're going to stay on this inner integral and um, evaluate these limits. That gives us a 4, 4 over 2, which is a 2, minus 1 over 2, which is a half. Keep my dx, don't forget about it. So that's um, looks like to be 3 halves x squared dx. At this point, I want to notice something, that there is no x in here. I mean, excuse me, there is no y in here. The y has disappeared. No more y. It's gone because I integrated over y, right? Uh, right from the very beginning, once I started integrating and doing these, these limits of integration, the y disappeared. And it's the same, just to remind you, just to be completely clear here, it's exactly the same as what you know. If you do an integral from a to b of f of x dx, that answer, there's no x in that answer. No x. You substitute in a and b, and there's no x's in here. So that's why, or just to emphasize really, that there's no y's in there. I now have just a straightforward integral over x, kind of baby stuff at this point. So let's integrate. So I have my three halves, then I have x cubed over 3 and I'm going to evaluate that between 0 and 3 and let me just normally I would indicate the evaluation this way without another square bracket so let's just let's just do that those threes cancel and I get uh, 27 divided by 2 okay so there's my answer easy enough so let's not wait too long let's just go and do this one so again I'm going to leave the outer integral in place and just work on the inner one I'll bring the down the dy in a minute not forget about it so I'm going to integrate this Again, it's an integral over x now. This y is just going along for the ride. I'm going to treat it as a constant, so in fact, I'm going to move it out front. I just prefer to do that. And then I'm going to integrate x, and I'm going to have it x cubed over 3. And now I do want to put some brackets here. And I'm going to evaluate that between 0 and 3. And again, my outer integral stays, comes along for the ride for now. Integral from 1 to 2 of y. Uh, and now I have uh, 27 over 3. Uh, you would probably reduce, go ahead and reduce, write that as 9 dy. So that gives me 9 integral from 1 to 2 of y dy is 9 times y squared over 2 from 1 to 2. And that's the same thing we just did. That's um, And that's going to give me 27 over 2. Okay, so we got the same answer. There you go. So that's it. You just work from the inside. You don't have to draw these big square boxes around here, but but mentally, um, you do this. You, you're going to work. You're going to do some inner integral. 
leaving the outer one to come along for the ride and uh, work your way out. In the end, again, I've lost both. Uh, I have. I just have numbers. I've lost the, the X's and the Y's, and I just have numbers. There's one more thing I want to say about this, which is that this integral, uh, this integrand actually separates. You can do, separate into the X and Y parts separately. I didn't do that because uh, I just wanted to start here. Effectively, we were separating when we were integrating just the Y and the X parts uh, independently, but I want to just uh, go redo it. I didn't draw the, the integral here. I'll have to redo it. And this, this obeys the separation. That is to say, this is a function of X only. Uh, let me just say it in words. This is a function of y only, so I can separate it into the product of two integrals. I can pull the x squared part out separately, uh, the x integrand part out, and multiply it by the y integrand. Again, I'll just refer you back to the notes, a little bit of algebra uh, for that, but you can, you can see that this is true. And uh, of course, then I'll just get, uh, this had better be, so this is going to be my x cubed over 3 between Naught and three. Sorry, I'll continue to draw brackets around this. And this will be my y squared over two between one and two. And this is going to give me my nine, and this is going to give me my three halves. And together I get the 27 over two. All right, what I want to emphasize about this is, of course, if your integrand separates, if you can uh, separate it as the product, if this separates into the product of two functions, then the integrals will separate, at least for these constant limits, let me say will separate into the product of functions and then you can just evaluate them uh, separately and, and, and have the product uh, two separate the product of two separate integrals. The reason you you want to do this when it exists is you're just less likely to make a mistake. Um, if you if you pull out the all the x's here and all the y's there and integrate these separately, you're less likely to get uh, get fuddled up in one of these things where this y and then somehow I didn't do something right here with this y which is being treated as a constant here or this x squared, which is being treated as a constant here, uh, something might just get screwed up. And if you separate them uh, right away, you're just uh, less likely to make a mistake. And the final thing I'll say is that when we do particularly integrals in cylindrical and spherical coordinates, for symmetry reasons, uh, it's very often the case that integrals separate. And you'll see, just it'll be very natural. You'll pull out certain um, certain parts of the into, integrand to the, into the, over to the front. We'll see this. And um, anyway, so if integrals, if integrals separate, you should uh, you should exploit that.